Waarom ben je anders dan mij? Oscar, nee Oscar, je hoort er ook bij. Even moet kijken, daar is Oscar. Nee, oh ja, doe het raam open, doe het raam open en roep hem. Oscar, Oscar. Oscar, hij komt, hij komt in de deur open, Annie. En dan maak je een boter en met pindakaas voor hem. Ja, en dan moet je tegen hem zeggen. Ik heb hem uitgelachen. Ik moest alleen maar lachen omdat hij zo gek deed en dat vond ik juist leuk. Dat vond ik juist leuk. Ja, dat hij. Ja, dat kan niet, dat kan niet. Oscar, oh Oscar, kruip je nou toch echt? Oscar, heus je hebt niet altijd veel. Oscar, hé Oscar, al ben je anders dan mij.
Ja, goede avond. Dit is het programma Beautiful Extremes. En uh, een speciale uitzending vanavond van het programma Beautiful Extremes. We hebben namelijk uh, bijzondere gasten in de studio. Tegenover mij zit uh, Snakefinger en meneer Hardy Fox. En Hardy Fox is de manager van de Residence. Hij is uh, de baas van de Cryptic Corporation. En de Cryptic Corporation uh, die zorgt voor alle Residence uitgaven. Maar eerst hoorden we een stukje van de nieuwe of van de laatst verschenen LP van Snakefinger. Snakefingers Vestal Virgins, The Night of the Desirable Objects. En het nummer wat we hoorden was uh, 8 en 4, oftewel 8 en a quarter. Is dat de uh, exact title of the song? Yes, that's the exact title. It's uh, taken from Fellini's film 8 and a half. But it's lots of different bits of music put together, so it's called 8 and a quarter. Ja, yeah. en um, the thing which amazed me from this LP was that uh, you had so many difficult styles. The, the songs are, even there's a more disco-like song and uh, it's not the, well, it's not the snake finger as we knew. Well, I think uh, one has to keep changing and one has to keep, keep, uh, Can you come? Can sure. you? Yeah. One needs to keep Or you, you can push the microphone as well. Gotcha. So, one, one keeps to, needs to keep getting at, at one's influences, and I like lots of different kinds of music, so I try and get as many in there as, as I like, you know. Yeah. It's purely for my enjoyment. Yeah, but uh, before that, you, most of your LPs were, you had. Uh, one LP with only blues songs and uh, well the old stuff was was a bit different yeah the the blues thing that was just a one time history lesson that I wanted to do it that's all it was a history lesson and it was it was at a time when I when you know I thought it basically needed something to happen like that it definitely needed it needed to be uh, told the way it's the way it was back then but but that was As I say, one history lesson, and I enjoyed doing it, but it certainly wasn't my main, uh, my main thrust in life. I certainly don't want to be a, some sort of teacher, mm -hmm. although I had tons of fun doing it. Yeah. So, what can we expect, uh, because you're playing in Amsterdam uh, this Saturday, what can we expect then? Well, I have a really super band. They're very, very, very good musicians, and... Uh, I have Eric Feldman from Captain Beefheart's band on uh, keyboards and uh, John Ryan on drums and Ben Guy on bass. They're very, very good musicians. And we'll be playing some stuff from the new record and some stuff from the old records and uh, none of the history of the blues. I'm afraid that's history. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how you di already did two concerts, I think, in Holland? Yes, yeah. We, no, one. Oh, one. one. Concert in Holland. Did it... Uh, Yes, well, it was real good. Yeah? It was in The Hague. Okay, so the next song we're going to play is I Gave Myself to You. I mean, let's hope that that's the song. Now I'm one of those 
shirts that got nothing to work Cause I gave myself to you I gave myself to you I gave myself to you I gave myself to you
Ja, het is uh, vier minuten voor één en je hebt geluisterd naar een van de, ja, een van de, de, de obscure opnames van de residents. So, Hardy, what was this exactly what we heard? Well, I don't exactly know. Uh, <laughs> What, what it amounts to is that when I was coming over here, the residents, I, I said that uh, I had talked to you before coming over yeah. uh, about doing a show while I was here. And uh, so I said, you know, what can you give me to play um, that hasn't been played before? And so they gave me several cassettes and, uh, and told me that I would have to go through them and sort of check them out. Mm -hmm. But it's... What it what it really is is things that they've worked on that aren't finished, things that uh, are sketches for things that they're going to do later, mm -hmm. or uh, just some experimental things. Uh, so I've I've certainly isolated a few things. Some are more finished than others. Um, some of them are pretty rough. Oh, uh, was this a pretty rough one? Well, I, I would say that that one is not a rough one, but I would say it's not finished. Yeah. It's probably... Uh, um, but to me, it sounds like a good start. So <laughs> it's probably going to become something. That's probably one that's, like, underway. Is this recorded after the, the, the last tour? All of the things they gave me have been since the tour. So the residents uh, worked a lot after their tour? They went straight into the studio after the tour and recorded Hit the Road Jack, just as the very first thing, um, just as sort of a getting back into the studio. And um, and they've virtually been recording ever since. Yeah. Is there any reason why they did record it, uh, Hit the Road Jack? Any p particular reason? Uh, yes, but I don't think I'll go into it. <laughs> It was for personal reasons. Oh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> so, and can people expect a whole LP of uh, of? I s w it wasn't written by Fitz Domino, but probably uh, Bar oh, Bartholomew. No, or, I don't was, know. It was written by. Um, let's see. I should know that. Uh, it was Ray Charles that actually. Oh, Ray Charles. Yeah, of course. Did it, but he didn't write it. Um, It was uh, Percy Mayfield. Well, Percy Mayfield wrote it. Yeah. So isn't so? Can people expect a whole LP of Percy Mayfield? <laughs> no, no, no. Percy was fine, but I don't think he's going to be covered in American composer songs. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's some good ones there. Well, he does. He does. I'm not saying he won't, but uh, and it was just a. It was a one-off. Uh, it had some particular sentiment about it that was suitable for. And situation. <laughs> and talking about the hit the road check, you immediately, uh, the residents immediately made a 12-inch version of it. Well, <coughs> well, sort of. Um, the uh, record company asked for an extended version, and so, uh, you know. So did the residents made the 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 twelve inch version, or was yeah. it remixed by somebody else? Like no, no, they they did it. It's it's hardly it's a remix, but it's not a real radical remix. It's no, more a, it's more of a re-edit. It's, yeah, uh, it's stretched out a little bit, and they uh, they added a, an additional bass drum to it because they thought that for an extended twelve inch that it should have a, a more clarified beat mm -hmm. because it's a little it's like a three four on a four four. So it's a little confusing from from a dance point of view. Yeah. And so by adding the two four on top of the three four on the four four mm -hmm. it became a little clearer. Yeah. Okay, so what are we going to listen to right now? Um this this is two tracks here. I I don't know if you want to go through them both um, it's two tracks that are like it's a rough sketch for a real completed thing uh, it's not a, it's not a recording of that recording quality it's quickly done mm -hmm. but it has vocals and everything so um, anyway I don't, I don't know that it's for anything in particular okay might be I don't know <laughs> Waiting for 
tired old father was broken hearted Emptiness upon me I want you and I need you But I fear someday that I'll Block the path that you might need to travel on a while. So if it happens, well, I will hide and wait because you said uh, someday you'll come back at least to get my shrunken head. Something suddenly she slipped into the night Escaping all she knew in love she went to see the light
so true, I may come back to you. And what you see and what you do and what you think you do. But I'll be mine inside the blindness that we have to live. But I'll still smile my smile for you. Ja, het is inmiddels 1 uur en 12 minuten geworden en je luistert naar een speciale uitzending van het programma Beautiful Extremes. En we hebben nog steeds in de studio Snakefinger en Mr. Hardy Fox, de manager van The Residence, de manager van uh, Cryptic Corporation. So, this is one of the other things The Residence recorded after their, uh, their worldwide tour. Yes. And uh, Snakefinger isn't on it. No, he's he's been gone too much. Yes, I've been <coughs> very busy touring and finish, finishing off my own record, and the residents tell me that, that I have a lot of work to uh, catch up on when I get back. <laughs> when I used to be in England after the first time I met the residents, they just send me blank tape to record anything on, and I just record anything on it, and then they'd use the blank tape. So now it's the other way around. They fill the tape and they send it over. <laughs> So, right. but after touring with the residents, you, you, uh, you worked on your own LP. Yes, that's right. We, we both got back from Aus Australia and New Zealand, and in between Australia and New Zealand and coming to Europe, the residents went back and they finished up their LP, and I went back and finished up my LP. Yeah, and uh, now you are touring again. So. Nice you have a busy with, live touring. That's right, that's right. I'm rather busy being out and about. But I mean, it's rather wonderful considering that we're still getting away with it after all this mm. time. And and is this only a European tour or is this a world uh, snake finger tour? Well, we did two months in America just before this. Oh. And we're going to Australia in November. Again? Yes, yes. Yeah. So it's uh, kind of following in the resident's footsteps, mm. you might say. So, a lot of people don't know, but you're actually, you're English. Yes, that's right. And, right. and but I, do you still have, or? No, no, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely, a pretty, pretty heavily Americanized at this, at this stage in the game. Yeah. And, um, one thing about the tour you, you did together with the residents, you, you were talking about Australia. You recorded uh, uh, a single there. You did one recording. Uh, you did one solo single in Australia, and you did one together with the residents. Actually, the the single that I did was already was already recorded. Oh. It, was, it was a Canadian thing that yeah. we did that was put out in Australia. It all gets rather confusing. Yeah, but the residents 
and I went into the studio one day and in a, in a very short amount of time recorded a pretty scorching version of uh, Man's World. And what was the other song that the residents... Uh, I didn't. Jailhouse Rock. Jailhouse Rock. They were... But, and that was done in Australia? Done in Australia, yeah. yes. One afternoon. Mm -hmm. And it's only out in Australia. Is it out there, Hardy? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw copies of it. <coughs> yeah, we, we even have copies here imported, so... Really very I'd really like to have one. Very, one. very oh, expensive. Have one? No. Um, very. <laughs> I've got some. <laughs> so, uh, Hardy, uh, the next song we're going to hear isn't actually a song, and is, it isn't made by the residents. So what's the story no. behind it? Um, well, the residents have, one of their sideline things that they've gotten into, it, I think it had a lot to do with actually being here in Amsterdam. Um, the... Uh, street musicians, the, I mean the street uh, organs, the, um, something that they were really interested in when they came here. And because um, they, they really saw street organs and things like that being like forerunners of the sequencer and of the, synth, you know, s the emulator, things mm -hmm. that they used. And so it's like they suddenly said, you know, here's history, here's the tradition that... Uh, a lot of what they do is coming out of. So they started really um, collecting a lot of mechanical instrument music. Mm -hmm. and, and so uh, I, this, I brought a tape that's actually from the uh, museum in Utrecht that's, uh, if people haven't been over there to check the, <laughs> that place out, it's pretty interesting. The residents have been over there and they are talking to people to see if if they can get permission to uh, write new material for the collection of instruments that they have mm. over there, uh, if that works out, it could be really interesting. Yeah. Um, so, but well, do the residents themselves have these old uh, instruments as well? I mean, these pyramid and and, uh, and what spell dozen? Um, no, they don't have anything that's like that. When they they did buy a little. Uh, a um, programmable music box where you could punch cards. Yeah. And uh, and they've played around with that some, but um, they haven't really produced anything. They'd really like to get hold of the the larger street mm. organs. But that are in the museum. So, are these street organs a really typical Dutch? You can really find them in America. No, you can't find them in America. The only ones that you can find in America are generally like on. Um, carousels, something like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There are no street organs that I've ever seen in America. Um, but the thing is that I brought two pieces. Actually, I brought another piece because um, they have been recently composing on a Apple Macintosh computer <laughs> that with, uh, with a real sophisticated program that allows... Well, it, it allows for reasonably elaborate com composition using digitized instruments. Um, so it's it's a real low quality, and it's only monaural. Mm -hmm. But I brought a cassette of that, just sort of like from the point of view of comparing them. Um, the um, the computer program, I think, that is something that they're really interested in because it looks like it's very much the direction that recording is going to be going in. Mm -hmm. So uh, so we can make a sort of comparison how it was done in the early days and how it was done in these right. days. Right, exactly. Okay, well, then the next, so I, I, I'll go on in Dutch, and uh, I say that the next number of the next music stuk that uh, is to find on the cassette of Speel, ik kijk eventjes, Van speelklok tot pyramid. En het is een cassette die de residents hebben gekocht in het. Uh, ik geloof dat het het Pyramid Museum is uh, in Utrecht, waar allerlei soorten oude speeldozen staan. Dus wat je nu gaat horen zijn niet de residents, maar wel muziek waar de residents graag naar luisteren.
Ja, dat was uh, muziek van een, uh, een draaiorgel en muziek waar de residents graag naar luisteren. En zoals je al gehoord hebt, Hardy zei het al, dat de residents waarschijnlijk muziek gaan schrijven voor oude pyramenten. Nieuwe muziek voor oude pyramenten en dat dan hopelijk een keer uh, uitgevoerd kan worden. Uh, en misschien in Utrecht. You, you were just talking about uh, the music the residents like to write uh, for these old instruments. Right. Is it uh, when will the residents r or not only write the music but also uh, play the music? Well, as far well, it's played primarily by punching cards. Yeah, and whether they'll actually punch the cards depends really upon the amount of commitment to the technology. It would mean learning how to punch the cards. Mm. It's possible that it would be better to have someone who's experienced in doing that yeah. to punch it from sheet music, um, which. Once again, it's an interesting thing back to the to the Apple yeah. Macintosh computer because the computer actually prints out <laughs> the music that's put into it. So uh, it's actually possible to just give a score over to uh, you know to someone to punch it. Mm -hmm. uh, the the uh, I want I wanted to mention that the software on the Macintosh is. Uh, that's being run on the next track that you're getting ready to, to play there is called Studio Sessions, which is, I mean, this is actually coming off of a Macintosh computer from a speaker that's plugged into the output of the computer. This this is, <coughs> has nothing to do with MIDI. It is not driving <coughs> any other instruments at all. This is totally coming out of the computer itself without any other instruments being involved in any way. The computer is just sitting on a desk. <laughs> And uh, this is a piece that the residents have been have been working on, mm -hmm. and they're using it for like a compositional technique. The quality is still pretty low, uh, but they're using it, and we'll probably be re-recording some of this or things similar to this that they're writing on it. So, if you want to play that, yeah, I'll play this.
Ja, muziek van een uh, Macintosh computer. Are the residents, uh, do the residents have a lot of uh, this modern computerized instruments? Or uh, instruments uh, as com computers as instruments? Or I don't know how to call it. Well, yeah. They're, they pretty much do. Um, they're really into like sort of low tech usage of high tech equipment. Um, and they're really into like sort of consumer level uh, equipment. They don't they don't have anything that's specially built. Like the Macintosh, it's just a Macintosh and they, mm -hmm. and the program is a commercially available program. Yeah. Uh, I mean anyone could have it and could do the same music, you know, if they wanted to. Mm -hmm. So uh no it's it, it's uh in, in fact the the computer is actually the computer that was done on is actually our business computer <laughs> that uh, Crypto Corporation. Yeah, right. For the, it's the Crypto Corporation's computer and they just sort of took it over for about a week <laughs> learning this program because the programmer is a residence fan and had brought the program by and uh had demonstrated it and so they started playing with it and so it was impossible to get on the computer for about a week. <laughs> um but anyway, they're real interested in the possibilities of it, and the, now they're talking with Apple, trying to um, get Apple to give them one of the new Macintoshes, a Macintosh 2, which has a lot more memory and has more sound capability, hmm. so that they can uh, can start doing really high-quality uh, sound recording the same way with the same technique, hmm. because it's really a different way of writing. And that's the thing they've discovered, that it makes them... The music that they write with a computer is different uh, than what they would th than what they normally write. It yeah. makes, makes them think differently. So, and yeah, I like that. <laughs> and w that's the thing we saw also during their their last gig in Amsterdam, that they used a lot of modern equipment, and still there was uh, Snakefinger trying to get more rock and roll into the music with his guitar. And that's, uh, well, that's the thing. Yeah, he was, wasn't he? <laughs> <coughs> Which is still trying. Uh, still amazing of the residents. They used all this modern equipment. And, well, I mean, Snakefinger is there for to put the, the rock and roll in the music. I'm there to remind of the old ways, the yeah. dying yeah. ways. <laughs> mm. So isn't, isn't it possible that the resident's going to play a, a guitar again or... Oh, I think the residents will always play guitars, and even more than that, they'll always have need for a person who actually knows how to play a guitar, mm -hmm. <laughs> like Snakefinger does, uh, to play the parts that they would like to be able to play but can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But just knowing how to play a guitar doesn't really help that much with the <laughs> residents. <laughs> you have to know how to play the guitar with the residents, which maybe you might be better off not knowing how to play guitar with other people. <laughs> But somehow, I think a little bit helps. Mm. Uh, is is, is uh, are you uh, snake thing? Are you also asked by other people to play guitar on their records, for instance? Well, I do some production work in in uh, San Francisco with various people, producing various local people that I consider to be interesting or good. Mm. But uh, I don't really generally go out and about and play guitar with, with anyone set for my own group and yeah. the residents as, uh, as it is a sort of a source of pleasure to me and, and uh, I wish it to continue to be that. Yeah. Are, are you uh, also listening at home, for instance, to the, 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 the residents' records? Well, to, some, to somewhat of an extent, I'm 
having to listen to them all the time to uh, to sort of learn and and uh, get familiar with certain bits. You know, we did one and a half years on the road together, so. Mm. So over the past two years or so, I haven't really been at home listening to anything <laughs> for pleasure, as it were, yeah, just yeah. sitting back. But I must admit, every once in a while, like a couple of years ago, I found an old test pressing in my room, and I didn't know what it was at all. And I just put it on, and I think it was, it was Mark of the Mole, and it just it amazed me at how, how much I enjoyed it, you know. It takes, it takes balls to sit down to a meal of residence music <laughs> but uh, but once you start eating it up it's quite tasty mm -hmm. and to what other kind of music are you you listening these days well i listen to a lot of film music that's uh that's one of my favorite things to listen to still mm -hmm. a lot of uh, bernard herman and morricone and nino rota a bunch of ethnic stuff like bulgarian and uh, aborigine music And uh, of course, all all very good guitar players. I like to listen to guitar players. I don't, I don't, or or almost any instrument if it's really well played. I like mm. to listen to brilliant instrumental technicians, and, yeah. and then I try and uh, try and take their more difficult licks away from them and and transform them around somewhat and use them in my own but, style. But do you ha when you talk about guitar players, do you listen to, for instance, hard rock or, well? Is, does it matter which music the guitar is in? No, it almost doesn't matter what what music it's in, as long as it's as long as I consider it to be really, really inventive and interesting. I mean, there's certain certain things like country swing, where you get these incredible players. They're much more jazz than they are country music. Mm -hmm. They have these incredible senses of humor, and they take off into a solo like they're going completely berserk they're they're very funny and very interesting and and they they insert an element of lunacy into their playing i really i really like that sort of thing mm. and uh i listen i listen to a lot of sort of jazz players now because i realize they have tons of technique and it's always very good to have a bit more technique i feel yeah and what about for instance uh the 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 new rap records from run dmc and the beast boys and they are using heavy metal guitars in it yeah yeah i must admit i listen to all that stuff too i just happen to quite like run dmc and the beastie boys yeah i i i went and saw them and they they seem like pretty modern entertainment to me yeah so is it possible that we can expect some 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 sort of thing like that from you No, I don't think so. I, I don't think I'll ever kind of sheepishly follow something just because <laughs> I like it. No, but, no, no. Uh, but I'm, I mean, I'm glad they're doing it. But, but, uh, well, you know, I like I like rhythmic things. I like things with with sort of basic beats and things in them. And uh, I have I have no doubt I'll be using as much of that sort of stuff as possible. I know <laughs> I already do. And one tends to find oneself getting a little heavy metal whether one likes it or not when one's a guitar player mm. yeah okay i think the next uh, recording is a very old recording i hope i'll cue it all right i think it's a recording from 1882 something 1882 like that. that's pretty old okay let's listen to it
afterwards, it's like a dream. You can't remember, but somehow it seems to stay alive inside your mind and prey on your leisure time. It hurts the an open pot, the air is sticky and hot. First they take away our clothes, and then they lay us down the road. Ja, dat was uh, Snakefinger live in 1982 in Uilenstede in Amstelveen. Een uh, heel memorabel concert. Was dit een van je eerste concerts in Holland? Ja, yeah, het was definitely een van onze eerste concerts in Holland. Het klinkt bij dat tape als het heel snel heeft gegaan. Je dacht dat het te snel was, de tape? Ja, het is zo heel moeilijk om te zeggen nu. Ik weet niet eens wat we misschien hadden gezongen al die tijd geleden. Misschien hadden we heel snel dingen gedaan en mijn voice was zo veel hoger. Wel, je was jonger dan. Ik was jonger, ja. Dus dit is eigenlijk een is bootleg tape. Are there any bootleg LPs from, from Snakefinger that you know? I can't think so. I, I can barely afford to put out a real LP, <laughs> let alone a bootleg. Well, I, I know there are a lot of bootlegs from the residents. Do, do you get to see them, uh, Hardy? I, I see some of them. Um, I haven't cared for any of the ones I've seen. Um, but, uh, you know, those things happen. Yeah. I, I always hope that they're going to be decently recorded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't think the do the residents mind it that there are bootlegs. I don't think they particularly care. Yeah. I, I don't think, think they. I, well, I don't think they think too much about it. I mean, people know that what bootlegs are. They know that bootlegs uh, are generally low quality and don't represent necessarily an artist at his best. 
Mm. But uh, you know, I've I've heard I have heard bootlegs. Yeah. From some artists that are actually quite good. But do do people send bootlegs to the residents? Um, the ones Try. the ones that I have I have had to either trade for or buy. Oh yeah yeah. And uh, that most of them have come out of Europe. Um, I have and others. I must hate to mention it by name, but there's there's one the third secret of Fatima or something which is pretends to be part three of the mold trilogy or something that is uh was from Milan and it's just really horrible <laughs> it's really horrible but uh now i i have i I have a collection of residence records and unfortunately I have to collect the bootlegs whenever I do run into them as well. <laughs> uh, you know, it's just the consequences, of yeah. it, I suppose. Is it, do you think it's more, it's easier to make a bootleg in, in Europe than in America? Because you mentioned you, you, you saw more bootlegs, European bootlegs than American bootlegs. Yeah, I've never seen an American one. Oh. Uh, all the ones I've seen are from Europe. Uh, I don't, no, why? I don't think it's any di more difficult. Mm -hmm. Maybe, uh, maybe there's more of a market in Europe for them. Yeah. Okay. So, the next things we are going to hear are uh, from the residents again. Is there any clue you can give? Yeah. This is a, this is a cover song, uh, a, a cover of the residents covering the residents. It's a. Uh, it's a different arrangement. It's an experimental arrangement. Um, they're working on a project that I can't really talk very much about, but uh, it concerns Eskimo. And this is uh, an ar arrangement on some of Eskimo. It's unfinished once again. So it, this is a, uh, an 87 or 86 rearrangement? No, this is a new. Well, this is an 87 arrangement, and uh, yeah. Okay, let's listen to it.
is Radio 100. Radio 100 is een samenwerking van Factum FM, WAS, Radio Robotnik Televisie en DFM. Radio 100 zendt uit iedere dag van 3 uur s middags tot 3 uur s'nachts. Voor meer informatie bel Amsterdam 162641. Radio 100 op de 100 MHz FM. Ja, je zou het bijna vergeten, maar dit was uh, de jingle voor Radio 100. En de jingle van Radio 100 is opgebouwd uit het nummer Colaja van The Resident. En op het ogenblik luister je naar Radio WHS. En WHS Radio is een onderdeel van Radio 100, namelijk... Radio 100 is een uh, samenwerkingsverband van een aantal radiostations die gevestigd zijn op de 100.0 FM. So this was a, a real fine jingle. I, I, well, we already have it since the, the record came out. But I heard that in America there is also a sort of disco net mix from, from this uh, song. Oh. Oh, oh go, yes. Go ahead. Well, there is, yeah. Yeah. Um. Someone took the the Dutch the Dutch version and yet re-edited it and remixed it again uh, from the CD I think from the Torso CD and uh, added some new drums to it and uh, added some of Billy Jean to it and like really made it like super novelty and it's been re-released out to clubs and. Uh, Which once again is getting it played in the clubs again. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, it's now there's something for the collector to look for. Yeah, but I think it's only for this special club of DJs. Yeah, it is. It's, it's a, a subscription service. Yeah. So if you want to buy it, or if you ever can get a hold of on it, you you have to pay 100 guilders at least, I think. Be and I think it's an LP with with six songs, six other four. mixes, four other mixes. Four, I think. It's a two. It's a two, uh, two twelve inch. No, maybe it is six. I don't really remember. But I've well. got a copy if anybody wants to try to. Make <laughs> well, it it, offer. it's a bit. <laughs> it's a pity you haven't uh, taken it with you, or at least a recording of it, because uh, I think the people w would be very anxious to hear it. Oh, I didn't even consider it, or I could have more <laughs> easily. Uh, but I know that uh, I know there's some going to be some coming to the country because I think that the deal that was worked out with uh, Torso was that. They're going to pay them in copies of the record. Oh, yes, but I don't think uh, Torso will sell these records, <coughs> knowing Ruth. <laughs> <laughs> Probably so not. Is, is the, the, this 12-inch remix only out on the Torso label, or is it also out on Ralph Records? No, it's only out on Torso. And uh, Torso um, sold the rights also to, I think, Spain. And right. I saw in Spain a, a Spanish version uh pressing of it and i think there were there is probably a greek pressing as well or is that only from I, actually, i don't know um i think it's licensed into greek i don't know uh, greece i don't know if if the uh if there's a greece separate pressing or not mm. then if there could be i should get a copy if there is <laughs> <laughs> do you have all the foreign pressings of all the residents records yeah yeah They're all in a sort of uh, archie archives of, uh, yeah. of the cryptic corporation. Yeah, we have quite a collection, actually. <laughs> we should open a museum someday. <laughs> well, there, I think the, the residents are in, in the Modern Art Museum. Well, the, the videos are in the museum. I don't know about any records. No, 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 but that's the only thing of the residents which is in the museum. Right, which will be, by the way, released. The video is being released here, I think, next week. Yeah, that's what what I wanted to talk about. That, and that's a special compilation a video. Um, yeah, it's pretty much all the the residents' videos, the ones that were on tour, uh, all compiled into one one video. What do you mean, the the ones? Well, in most places on the on the tour, the videos were shown before the show. Yeah, and it's. It's that plus a little more. Um, 
so that the people can th those videos people saw before the concert they can buy right it's a man's world and the one minute ones and etc mm. etc cetera, et cetera. do the residents still make a video video clips um yeah they haven't made one this year but they they want to you know a lot of times it's just a matter of figuring out how to finance it mm -hmm. it's very expensive but, yeah uh, um but there isn't a video clip f from uh Kolacha, for instance or from no from heterojack no <coughs> um no, if there's anything, it will be from uh, what they're currently working on, and because uh, they're working on a new album now. Yeah. And so, um, but once again, I still don't know where the where the money's going to come from for it. But like Kurosawa, Fellini, and Stanley Kubrick, great people have very big difficulties financing their films. <laughs> so the residents also have difficulties. Yes. <laughs> Okay, well, w the next tracks which are, we are going to listen, can you give some more information about it? These are two more that were on this cassette that the residents gave me. Uh, w one of them sounds like uh, it might be somewhat uh, coming off of the big bubble period. Oh, yes. Um, the other one sounds like just like a beginning track for for something. Okay. So, but this is some older material, not 87. This is 87. Oh, still 87. Yeah, everything I have is 87. Okay. I wouldn't bring you anything other than the latest. All right. <laughs> Ba 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 
Perhaps you can explain another story then, Mr. Clem. I understand that the residents simply hate and abhor the Beatles. What can you say about that? Uh, Sid, that's absolutely false. The residents do not hate the Beatles. They have simply expressed an attitude which indicates boredom with the present-day rock and roll culture. All right, then. Perhaps you can explain to me why the rumor is currently running rampant through Australia that the Beatles are, in fact, the residents. Uh, such a rumor exists, Sid, because Ram Magazine in Australia published a story uh, supporting the argument that the residents are, in fact, the Beatles. But this is, of course, untrue. It's absolutely untrue, Sid. But then maybe it explains why the residents have released their new single with a Beatles song right on it. Well, it may or may not explain that, Sid. It just so happens, though, the residents did record Flying, a Beatles tune from the Magical Mystery Tour album. You may be more interested to know, however, that the Beatles themselves perform a resident song on the flip side of this very same record. Aha! It must have been really tough to get those lads back in the studio again. Uh, tough it was, Sid. In fact, uh, the Beatles don't even know they were there. Let us hear this controversial new single right now. <laughs> Thank you. 
Ja, dat waren de Residents. Een wat oudere opname van de Residents. Wat heet een hele oude opname. Uh, in, which in which year the re Residents did record this? I don't actually know. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'd have to look it up. Well, I mean, it was in the beginning, I think. Yeah, I don't remember. It's in the 70s sometime. Yeah. And you you were just telling me that the residents did it by cutting uh, the tapes themselves. Yeah, it was all it's all tape work. Yeah. Every sound in it, it actually came off of a Beatle record. <laughs> um and a lot of the the things were overlaid and in order to get them in sequence and to get them uh, synced together, they would wrap tape around the cap stands of the tape recorders to change the speed of them. Yeah. To uh to bring them into proper speed so the loops would match up. Mm -hmm. there was, there's a lot of work in that yeah. one piece. So in, in the beginning the, the residents did a lot of uh, things to um, to uh, to get attention and one of the things they, they had a they had a beetle sort of beetle beetle cover on, on the first residents LP and this is also the Beatles. Do you do you think the residents still listen to the Beatles? I, I think they've memorized them. I think years ago. Yeah. Uh, I think that it's just more of a, a more of a pop awareness. It's they they have uh, a pop music awareness that, that infiltrates into their music all the time. So mm. the Beatles just happen to be sort of like the current yeah. ongoing kings, along with Elvis, I suppose. Mm. Along with Elvis, yeah. That. Yeah. I feel like I ought to stick up for the resident seeing only their managers here right now. They'd never use a cheap ploy like taking the Beatles' name to publicize themselves. Oh. <laughs> yeah, but we had, uh, um, on Monday, we had a, a television program which was called 20 Years Ago to celebrate uh, the, the 20th anniversary of Sgt. Pepper. And the CD which came out from Sgt. Pepper do you think the residents um, well still remember the Beatles and say, well, it was 20 years ago, why don't we do another Beatles song? I've been very surprised because what I thought that they were working on for their next album isn't what they were doing at all. I was under the impression that they were doing an American Composer series next. And uh, just recently found out that they're not. No. Oh. Uh, so. Yeah, because the rumors say they the next LP from the residents will be with Bob Dylan and Sun Ra on it. That's what I had understood myself, but yeah. it apparently is not true. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so it's still a great surprise what will come out. Yeah, apparently they're working on uh, an entirely different project from that. Mm -hmm. so. But the well the the this, the first thing which will will come out is uh, a CD of the live recording uh, in the Paradiso in Amsterdam. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in fact, when I was here last time, if as you may remember, what I was doing here when I was on your show last time was yeah. that I was in town because I was editing that same CD. And uh, I must admit, I'm back in town editing that same CD <laughs> again. Uh, yeah, there were some problems, there I think. Some, some problems, yeah. Which uh, were which, which are overcome now. Yeah, finally. Uh, so we can expect this CD in about two, two or three weeks? Yeah, about two or three weeks it'll finally be out. Uh, I think we've got it straightened out this time. Yeah. And this will be the uh, uh, a big part of the concert recorded in Paradiso. Right, right. And uh, I just, you know, I had I just went through the whole thing just uh, on Monday, uh, at doing the final edit on it, and uh, it's actually quite good. I, I'm looking forward to it. Mm -hmm. And this is the concert on which uh, Snake Finger played as well. Yeah, yeah, he plays beautifully too. So mm -hmm. will the last part of the concert will also be included, where Snake Finger did of uh, did a bit too much of a solo, I think. According to the residents? No, the residents had strict instructions to make sure that none of that was included. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, and uh, talking about the CDs, uh, this CD will come out on Torso Records, as I understood, not on Ralph? Um, 
Right. Yeah, and Torso will be uh, re-releasing old stuff on CD as well. Right, the entire back catalog will be coming out on Torso. Well, the entire. The entire catalog. Yeah. And so, as I understood, all the LPs will come out on CD, but some of the CDs will have extra things on it. All of the CDs will have extra things on Yeah, them. but will those extra things be already recorded stuff or also... Uh, not recorded uh, on record. Um, the the current strategy it's going to be a release period that's going to go over the full year. The first two releases are Eskimo and the third Rock and Roll. Um, I think that the general strategy is to try to release all of the additional material um, in con connection with with the major LPs, mm -hmm. which means that like. Um, a, a minor LP, like, uh, say, the soundtrack to The Census Taker, which has a lot of other tracks on it, too, that have already been released, will be condensed down and will be on the same uh, CD as Whatever Happened to Bonus Fats. Mm -hmm. Our title in Limbo, will be, which was done with Renato on the Loaf, will be reduced down to its best tracks and will be included with one of the other albums. Yeah. So it'll be that type of thing. I don't think there'll be anything specially recorded mm. for it, but I think that anyone who buys all the CDs will pretty much have the entire collection of everything that's been released. Yeah. So, and, and this will only be in, in on Torso Records again? It'll only be in, on Torso in Europe. Yeah. Won't, won't Ralph ever release a, a resident CD? Uh, the residents do CD with a different company in the States. Oh, oh, that's Ryko. Yeah. So they're signed to a different label for CDs. Oh, the residents have different uh, deals with... Uh, they have their records on Ralph, and their CDs on Ryko. Do they have other deals? Uh, in the States? Yeah. Uh, no, it's just it's Ryko and, the, and Ralph. Ryko for CDs and Ralph for the LPs. At least through the next LP. Mm -hmm. I, the residence contract actually expires after the next LP for Ralph. Oh. And the residents will stay with Ralph or you don't know? Well, it'll go into negotiation. They, I, w I expect that they'll stay with Ralph. Uh, but <laughs> yeah. um, we'll, we'll, we'll wait on that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Can you tell something about the next tracks? Uh, no. No. That's another one of the ones that I don't know anything about. <laughs> it's from that cassette that I got. Okay, here we go.
Ja, dat waren weer uh, opnames van de Residents, waarvan de, de, de titels nog niet bekend zijn. Het zijn allemaal uh, ruwe opnames die de Residents na hun laatste tour gemaakt hebben. So, we're nearly at the end of this program. Hardy, can you tell something about uh, when the Residents will come back uh, to Holland, to Europe? Are they planning a new uh, European tour? Oh, yeah, as a matter of fact, that's another reason I'm here. It's, uh, they're going to be running their 1989 tour based, uh, so the European tour will be 89, and uh, I'm sure they'll be back here. In fact, probably they'll be at the, uh, the music theater uh, in 89. And, uh, but since that's a while off, I highly recommend that everyone be at the Milky Way Saturday night where I'll be to see Snakefinger. Yeah, okay. So, um, and, and what about the, the Mole Show? What has happened to the Mole Show? Do you know something about that? No. Only the residents know. Well, I don't know what you mean. Uh, the Mole Show was finished. Um, so, yeah. everybody's waiting, still waiting for part three of the Mole Show. Oh, part again. three. Oh, part three. Well, you say part three. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know a thing about part three either. I'm, uh, I know it's, they talk about it, like mm. it's something they're going to do. Yeah. But uh, no, I don't know anything about it. I guess it's in there with uh, <laughs> part, part four of the famous composers, <laughs> American composers. Oh, I think that will happen. I think all of it will happen if they live long enough. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> okay, well, let's end this program with uh, uh, two tracks of the new Snakefinger album. En uh, ja, ik zal het nog even vertellen. Snakefinger die speelt aanstaande zaterdag, zaterdagavond in de Melkweg. En Snakefinger, zoals jullie allemaal wel weten en als jullie naar dit programma hebben geluisterd, is de vaste gitarist van de Residence. Maar hij zal natuurlijk geen Residence muziek uh, gaan spelen. Hij heeft zijn eigen muziek. Oké, okay, well, I think this was it. Uh, I thank you. And, uh, well, I hope the people come to the Milky Way to see Snakefinger. I hope so too. Oké, okay, this was a WHS Radio a special item about Residents and Snakefinger. And I will be on your radio next week on the same wavelength and the same time. Until then... Bye bye. I wonder why they had to cry. They talk so much about it. I had to try.
Jesus. He gave me water. He gave me water. He gave me water. Jesus. He gave me water. He gave me water. He gave me water. Jesus. He gave me water. He gave me water. He gave me water. I wanna let it swell. He gave me water. He gave me water. That woman gave me water. Gave me that loving, lasting water. What a woman! What a loving woman! When there was none in, in the well. well, there was a woman from Samaria came to the well to get some water. It was there she met our Savior. So the story tell how that woman dropped her pitcher, but her drinking was made richer by the water he gave her when there was none.